I am a big fan of psychology and I want to understand the human mind and all its shapes and forms. Now I do a DPhil in experimental psychology where I understand the research and the theoretical backgrounds of psychology but I also like to spend time reading about clinical psychology and more introspective psychology like meditation and I create a whole podcast on understanding emotions which talks about emotional intelligence and the other third arm of psychology that I really like is business and more specifically marketing. And here are my favorite books on marketing. The first one is this book called The Key Person of Influence. Now, strangely enough, this is the only book I have which is in hard copy. This book talks about this idea of personal branding. Now, if you look at brands like Apple or Nike, all of these are big brands. But if you look at the Twitter followers of Apple, the Twitter followers of Tim Cook would be much more than that of Apple. In other words, people like people. We like to buy from people, not abstract entities. So even big brands like Apple or Nike and those brands, even, even those long lasting brands fall short of generating the popularity that the CEO generates within the last decade or so. If you look at Nike, all of their branding is focused on, let's say, Michael Jordan's shoes or Serena Williams' shoes. And so this idea of we buy from people and businesses should humanize themselves. And of course, this whole rise of Instagram influencers. And if you look at Rock, who launched his own alcohol brand, and then it became a billion dollar brand just like that, because he was a rock. And which is why a key person of influence is very important to know. The idea of personal branding, even if you're not interested in doing it yourself, it's important to know what's happening. And then obviously you can choose to be that key person of influence yourself. The next book I'm going to talk about, which is by the same author, and it's called Oversubscribed. Now, I have first read Oversubscribed on Kindle and then I also listened to it on Audible. And it's one of my favorite books on marketing, actually. And the reason for that is because it talks about this phenomenon of business is profitable and evergreen and everlasting when it reaches that point of being oversubscribed. Now, what does oversubscribe mean? Oversubscribe just means that there is more demand for your product than you have the capacity to meet. So for example, if you look at a nightclub, that's a very classic example of people who use oversubscribe principles where they have huge lines outside their venues where people are waiting to get in. Now, in fact, if you go in, you might find there's a fair amount of space. It's not crowded per se. And this is where the book gets really interesting because it's not about just filling it to capacity, but it's filling it to capacity so that you can offer a service that is high class. So if in a club, if you just make it super dense and people are just like squishing into each other, then that means that the as the club, the business, they won't be able to offer you a very good experience. So oversubscribed is this idea of accounting for that quality in your delivery process. And when other people see that you oversubscribe, the demand for your products actually increases. And that leads to this loop of being profitable and flourishing and at the same time, continuously having this inflow of people who want to do business with you. So this idea, understanding this idea of being oversubscribed is quite important if you want to grow and scale your business. Now, of course, I'm not talking about from a, I don't have practical experience with these things, but what I do have practical experience with and understanding is this idea of being needy. So oversubscribed is just the antithesis of being needy. So when you're needy, people don't want to do any sort of business with you, be it like a friendship or a romantic relationship, or be it more of a financial business sort of a relationship. And when you're oversubscribed, when you have abundance, then people are more likely to be friends with you and so on. So understanding it is not just important from a business marketing perspective, but also understanding it is helpful from a core psychology perspective. It helps us understand what makes people attracted to others in all sorts of ways. All right, the next book I am going to talk about is a book called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Now, I like this book because I have been building a course on emotional intelligence on the side. And you know, you like to think that you create a great product or a great podcast or a great YouTube video and people just show up. But that simply isn't the case. 
and you have to take an effort to meet people where they are at and do it in an ethical and beautiful and wholesome way in which them noticing you and noticing your business is actually a win for them and you both. We all know how annoying just buy this stuff kind of salespeople are and we want to essentially add value to people's lives. And what expert secrets talk about is this idea of funnels and how do you get over your own blocks around positioning yourself as an expert and it talks about webinars and ways to talk about stories that are not immediately going into teaching. Now, for example, as, as an academic, I'm tempted to just start teaching, but that is not good marketing. Your job as a person who is trying to teach something is not just to teach that thing, but also to trigger the inspiration behind why someone should learn that thing. Why should anyone care about listening to you? You cannot assume that people just know that you have something great. And even if they know it, why, why would they care? And so Brunson talks a lot about that in his book, Expert Secrets. The next book I'm gonna talk about is Influence by Robert Chiadini or Chiadini, I don't know how it's said. Now this is a core psychology book written by a psychologist and it talks about the art of persuasion. There are various triggers, various psychological triggers we have as humans like reciprocity, like if you if you do something for people, people want to do something back. There's a whole video I made about social psychology in which I covered one of Robert's studies. So check that out. But essentially, Robert talks about the core psychology of why people make the decisions that they make. Why do people buy from you? Why do they not buy from you? What is the core triggers that people are responding to? And Robert does a great job of that in a very lucid, easy to understand language. So I recommend you check that book out. Now the final book I'm gonna talk about is a book called Launch. Now when I first heard about this book recommended in one of the course I was doing, I was like, ooh, that sounds so gimmicky. Like why do I need a formula? I'm much more about organic and authentic reach. I feel like when, when I'm being authentic, people connect with me. And while that is kind of true, the book totally blew my mind and I'm actually still reading it because it's just so good that I'm reading it word by word. And the book is much more than just like, you know, this is the formula, go for it. It talks about various, again, core psychological triggers like anticipation. Now imagine like a new movie is being launched. What do the producers and the directors of those movies do? They send their stars to interview on various news shows or talk shows. They have billboards all over. And then there is that massive launch day where there is like people queuing outside their theaters to watch this movie. Same goes with something like Apple products where there is months of rumors and people and journalists trying to figure out what the next product is. And all of this builds anticipation. And anticipation also creates this sense of ritual. Like humans like to be a part of something larger than them. And when you are participating in something like a product launch or a film launch, you're being part of a ritual. You're culturally part of something. And using that fact, you can create this beautiful experience for the people around you where they are not only just, you're just not only saying them, hey, buy my thing, but you are creating a community around you and you're guiding people through this beautiful experience, which A, will help you trigger more purchases, but also B, for the community, you're just adding this beautiful value and this sense of belonging. And that is another great way to do marketing. Now that list is over, if you wanna go, you can go. But I just wanna have a bit of a chat about this idea that marketing can be considered as evil or manipulative or unethical. And it's true that some people would do that and use these tri psychological triggers in unethical ways. Sure, but, and I, I used to believe that, you know, marketing and sales and all of this is a bit manipulative and I should not be doing that. It didn't, it was not like good words for me to learn marketing. But what changed it for me is this understanding that people don't show up for anything really. Like you're not entitled to people's attention. And if you want people's attention, if you truly believe that you have something of value to offer, then marketing is a great act of service if done well. So in general, the kind of marketing and reach that one should aspire to have is of adding value, is one of giving more than you take. 
and in that way you can look at marketing as a meaningful service that you're doing to people in which you are inspiring them and telling them stories about the various ways in which their lives can be better i do think marketing can be a great force for good because how else are you going to enroll people in the beautiful things that you have discovered you have to reach them you have to understand where they are at you have to speak to them it's not enough to just believe in your product and then just sit around in a couch entitled to people's attention no you have to earn their attention you have to earn their trust more importantly and i think good marketing done well is about building trust it's about building community and it's about interaction and adding and giving so if if you had this blog around marketing or sales and if you're watching the video a bit squeamish about why is he talking about marketing maybe you're one of the people from an academic world and don't relate as much to the business and sales side of thing all right thanks for watching this video please subscribe down below and join my email list to get all the behind the scenes of what i'm currently working on right now the important and interesting things i'm discovering and so on and so forth 